thank you very much for joining us on this next Tech Fest session. And I'm really looking forward to this one. It's, it's a great example of collaboration between three companies. And as you know, the themes for the Tech Fest have really touched on these five steps towards successful inkjet projects. And one of those that's been mentioned several times, but continues to be really crucial is collaboration. And I've got a really good example here. So uh, I'm just going to introduce everyone or get themselves to introduce uh, who they are. Um, we've got Holly Stegman from Integration Technology. We've got Ali Aaron Perwala from Seiko and Ralph Muller from Siegvert. Hi to all of you. Hi. Hi. Good afternoon. Good. Thank you. And I'm going to get you just to do a little intro because... It's useful for people to, to know your background and to understand uh, which direction you're coming at this particular conversation. So let's start with Holly. Holly, we've known each other quite a long time. We have, you've been, yes. You've been, you've been in the industry for a few years. So tell yes. us a bit about you. <laughs> yeah, so I've always been in the industry through my whole career, actually. So, um, yeah, I'm, it's been a few years now and I've been sort of around all over now, sort of print, I've been print heads, Inc, um, Marabou and Fujifilm I've worked for. I started actually in the lab at Fujifilm Serical back then. And I've worked also for industrial inkjets in the UK building single pass printers. So from engineering to ink, I have quite a wide range of background, um, a wide range of experience. And now I'm working for integration technology on the business development side. Brilliant, thank you very much. Ali, tell us a bit about your background. Thanks, Fraser. Um, so my name's actually Ali Asgar Eran Purwala, as yeah, Fraser yeah. tries to pronounce Thank you it, very right? much for <laughs> getting that right for me. <laughs> no, no problem, Fraser. Uh, but <clears throat> absolutely fine. I go by the name Ali, and that's uh, that's how people call me. So I've just after my master's, I moved into I did my master thesis in the field of inkjet at at Zar, actually. So it started off in 2013. I worked for Zar, and that's where I got kind of sucked into inkjet and worked for three years after that in an R&D um, position in a machine manufacturing company. And then in 2017, I moved on to work for um, Seiko as a sales manager for initially for the German speaking region. So Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. And last year I got a promotion and then I took over as the head of sales for the region of EMEA. So currently I'm the head of sales for uh, Europe, Middle East, Africa, and also India. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then Ralph. Yes, sure. Thanks, Fraser. And so, so basically, I joined the industry six years ago when I joined Siegwerk in 2015. So from my background, I'm a chemist, um, but I started in a strategic position um, in Siegwerk and uh, basically did strategic market assessments and technology assessments um, for a couple of years. And then in 2018, moved into an operational uh, position, then basically jumping into the digital market, um, into our uh, newly found uh, business unit, Inkjet, uh, where today, basically, I am, um, as Ali, uh, in the role, basically, of being head of sales, uh, EMEA, for our UV Inkjet Ink solutions. Brilliant, brilliant. Thank you, guys. And that just sort of sums up the, the, the different areas that we're we're kind of picking up on today, which is this collaboration between three organizations covering curing inks and heads technology and and that and, and the way in which you can help OEMs and projects to 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 move forward quickly in 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 terms of inkjet and development. Now Ali, you're going to give us a few slides just to give us a little bit of a flavor of what um, the three companies represent in terms of the technologies. So over mm -hmm. to you. I'm just going to share my screen. Um, it's going to be a presentation from all three of us. So sure. basically, um, the first slides of the printhead that we as Seiko are bringing into this collaboration. So this is the RC1536 printhead that um, was launched quite a, uh, quite a while back in 2014. But um, we are kind of bringing this, present, bringing this printhead into other markets now. So this, it has a drop size from all the way from 12 picoliters going up to 225 picoliters, so very wide drop size range. 
then the print frequency about 37 kilohertz for the single drop then um you know it's quite fast you know, can go up to 150 meters per minute if you're just printing with a single drop and a print width of 108.3 millimeters so it's the basic specs of a of a of a printhead for single pass but we're also pushing it in in other markets like ceramics cardboards coatings um textile and many different um applications which are more or less let's say industrial so that's that's the idea of of bringing this printhead into the market I'm going to let Ralph now just explain his part in this collaboration. Yes, sure. Thanks. So just basically a quick snapshot of um, Siegwerk. So, so basically Siegwerk is one of the global leading manufacturers of inks and coating, coating specialized for the packaging and label markets. Huh? So basically we have a global ink and varnish output of more than 250,000 tons um, of ink each year which we basically achieve with more than 5,000 um, Siegwerkers in, in 35 countries. Um, and all of this then combined results in, in net sales of, of more than 1 billion euro per year. The, the big importance for Siegwerk is that we focus on ink solutions rather than ink products. So we are not just selling cyan, magenta, yellow, and black ink, but we are specifically developing solutions for each of our customers, because the packaging market and also the label market is a very demanding and application-driven uh, market. So st just standard products just doesn't, don't deliver basically the, the ideal solutions. So basically we started to uh, look into the inkjet technology already in 2012 but then finally entered the inkjet ink market in 2018 by acquiring the, the inkjet ink business specifically for single pass label and packaging printing um, from ACFA. Um, then basically created um, our center of excellence for inkjet technology in France, where today we basically produce um, and develop all of our um, inkjet inks which are basically today a unique mix of UV curable inkjet inks as well as water-based inkjet inks. So that's basically the two technology, technologies which we see needed for basically tackling the whole complexity of the packaging and label market. Um, yeah, so I'll just tell you a little bit about integration technology. Uh, we consider ourselves as pioneers of UV LED technology. Uh, since 2002, we've been in, in the market um, from LED. Um, we hold numerous patents in this area as well. And as Ralph said, the key one of our key points is that we're not just supplying products, we're not just supplying lamps, we're supplying also solutions. Uh, lamps are often think, thought of as an afterthought. And that's why we're, we're trying to change that um, view and working with other partners to show also that the lamps are important and critical part for the integration of the systems. We're part of the IST Meds group. So with IST Meds, we have the largest, world's largest portfolio of UV lamps and UV LED lamps. Um, and we also have the sales and service network behind us as well from this point of view. But the key point here is we're providing not just standard, also then tailored solutions um, that meet these complex industrial applications. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Holly. Thanks, Ali, for giving us a little insight there. Um, now, I know that you in particular have been working on a, a specific project, haven't you, uh, that is involving in the packaging market and in particular focused on UV inkjet matte varnish. So tell us a bit more about that. Mm -hmm. So it, it all started off um, actually with the first call between um, um, a Siegwerk, um, so Ralph and myself. And Ralph told me that there's a requirement from one of his customers where you know they need to print um, a matte uh, varnish. But um, the particle sizes of the of the particles in this um, in this varnish are, are bigger than not than, than the standard inkjet inks, let's say. 
So we said, you know what, we have this printhead, the RC1536 that I uh, introduced earlier. This printhead is used in the ceramics market, you know, so ceramics uh, is, it, the particles in this, in this market are quite big. Mm. So we said, you know, let's try it out. And we, we were just, start, we started discussing about this quite some time back. And then we said, okay, let, let's um, use this opportunity. And at the same time, you know, Holly called me up and she's like, she saw one of our videos and she saw our ITL lamp in one of our videos. And she said, you know what, can we do something together? Can we do some marketing together? Can we do some collaboration together? Sure. And we said, you know what, we, I'm trying to work on a, on a project with, with Siegwerk and I think we need your expertise in getting the right UV light um, or the right UV settings in to get the, get the, um, the right results that you want, you know? So, um, I mean, I, I always say this, you know, the, pres- the printhead by itself is, let's say, just a part. I mean, it's, you need the ink, you need the, the right curing to get it to work correctly for the application. So um, I just asked these guys and then they were like, you know, you know what, let, let's, let's do a collaboration. Let's put in the investment that's needed for it. Let's, let's put in the, the, the knowledge, let's share the knowledge and let's see how it goes. So that's and, how it actually started. Sure. And that, and, and that varnish is, is quite a challenge, isn't it? I think I think um, uh, Ralph can take that up. Yeah, a Ralph, bit Ralph, Ralph, yes. Ralph, definitely, yes. So um, up to now, I believe there 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 was not really a solution for for digital mud varnish. Mm-hmm. So I mean, in the end, you need to see that um, specifically in the label market, in the label printing market, there is always there has always been quite a high demand and usage of of mud finishing technologies because the main technology. Which, which people use for producing labels is, is UV based. Eh? So UV flexo nowadays more and more UV inkjet. I think there has been tremendous growth in the last years of, of inkjet technology, but especially on the finishing and on the, on the matte finishing, mm-hmm. there was always this intrinsic problem that for having a matte effect, you need big particles, which basically break through your glossy uh, um, area of the of the cured print and and give you give you this this disturbance of light and and the mud effect. So basically, with inkjet technology having fine nozzles, um, big particles are simply not a good match. So there, basically, the, the Zyco technology with big nozzles, recirculation up to the nozzle plate was just the perfect fit to uh, making this. Much technology accessible also for for inkjet printing. Mm-hmm. And I know that um, I know from integration technologies point of view that one of the things that you talk a lot about is that ability to to adapt your technology to the requirement of the project. For example, exactly. Yeah. Does it, does this particular instance mean that you you're taking something off the shelf or you're adapting it? How how you how's it working, Holly? So with this. This is the perf- a perfect example of how it's really important to be in touch with all the partners from the beginning of a project, because by doing that, we were able then to discuss together and we discussed, OK, so what actually would be the best wavelength, for example? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, could a combination of wavelengths be interesting for this? Um, you know, in, in normal in normal print, digital, wide format applications, different wa- mixed waveforms ne- not necessarily gives you some benefits. But when you're developing something and it's and you know from the beginning, okay, if I use if I if I have the ability to use a mixed wavelength, I can really adapt my formulation to include different photo initiators and give a real advantage. Um, so that's where kind of industrial projects and industrial applications kind of differ from sort of traditional or in digital di- traditional wide format applications. Sure. You know, it's this tailoring. Yeah, so yeah. with these discussions at the beginning. Well, we were able then to, you know, say, okay, I think here we could have an advantage using different wavelengths. And then we were able with, with Seiko, with their, with their lab setup, then we're able to test that with them to then determine, okay, are we onto something here? Sure. So sure. It, it could be, you know, a, a standard product, but it could be a different setup with different wavelengths or, and the other the other thing to consider here is also when it, when the when the when we're going further when we're going to implementation into the into the market there then you need different options you need 
options that are going to suit to the high speed um, um, printing in Flexo, for example, you know, it, it can be, you know, we said an average of 50 meters per minute. So, but there could be other customers that maybe want to implement this at a higher speed. And then sure. you need to have a wide range of curing options to, to then also be able to cure at higher speeds. Yeah, yeah. Um, Ali, so does this, what Holly was mentioning there was the waveform. Um, does, does this mean that you need special settings for jetting this fluid in the heads? Um, I mean, so um, every fluid by itself um, has a specific waveform for it. This is mm -hmm. because, uh, I mean, waveforms work on the propagation of sound in the in the fluid itself, so the acoustic period of the fluids. Um, so based on the composition of the fluid, there is a different acoustic period for it. Mm -hmm. And based on this acoustic period, there is a waveform that's created uh, for that particular fluid. So um, when the particle size increases in these fluids, yep. the, the, the period changes, the acoustic period changes, and then there's a, there is this waveform that was created for it. So this is like a standard procedure for us. I mean, it's mm -hmm. not something going out of the box, creating something new. It is, a, it is a standard procedure for us, but the fluid was new. I mean, we have never yeah. printed something like this yeah. Uh, yeah. before. And um, uh, we didn't have so much experience. I mean, even today, I mean, I wouldn't say we have so much experience in the UV segment. So, sure. you know, we are, we have been working with oil inks, we've been working with solvent inks. That's, that's, you know, that's like, uh, ask us anything about it and we know what to do. And yeah. the UV was something we need that input from, from others, from ink manufacturers, from, from um, UV lamp manufacturers. And that's what we did, you know, in this case. We created the, the waveform for, for this, and then we did some testing. So sure. as Ali was mentioning earlier, you know, we, we have a small setup in our lab, just one simple print head. Where, where is the lab? Uh, we have the lab in uh, in Frankfurt. Not exactly Frankfurt; it's a little bit south of Frankfurt. Um, but we we moved very recently here. So uh, we had the lab for three years in Paris, and the space there was you know getting constrained, and we didn't have enough uh, resources there. And we have the headquarters for uh, for the Seiko op operations in in Europe. We have the headquarters in in Frankfurt uh, sure. in, in Neusenburg. So we said, you know what, let's uh, make this place even bigger. And we rented out an entire floor in our building. Sure. We just got the entire lab moved sure. in here. And yeah, we just, we just put this ink in. We, put the, we got the new uh, settings for the lamp. We got the new lamp, the new LEDs. I think Holly can explain that uh, in more detail. And uh, we, just, we just tried out, you know, I mean, if, if it's going to work, if it's not going to work. I mean, there are iterations that need to be done. So mm. we did the first iteration without the right settings. So, mm. you know, uh, to just know where we stand. Mm. And now we are, um, we, we, we worked on a second uh, iteration, which looks much better. Oh, good, good. So, kind of like so just, just to pick up on that. So you've got the three, three of you in effect are bringing your, your wisdom to the table, aren't you? It's like the other option for a, for a, for a company looking at technology like Inkjet is to go to someone who says they can deliver all, everything. But what you've got with this particular collaboration is in, in effect masters of, of each segment, you know, head manufacturing, ink technology, curing systems. Is that is that what you get when you work with a, a collaboration like yourselves? Do you think that's what someone listening now is thinking, well, you know, I've got two options. I can go down the route of a one-stop shop or I can go somewhere where the project is pulled together by three different organizations with three different sets of knowledge, pulling them together. What, what do you think? Holly? Um, so this has been something that I've always, always discussed for a long time, especially when I moved into the industrial um, side. I, I w I've never been a believer that there's a one-stop shop. Um, okay. For industrial applications, it's just not possible. Mm. You know, there's people that do, it, do think certain things well, and, that, you know, for example, the company I worked at in England, Industrial Inkjet, they build um, single pass print engines. They do that very well. They don't try and build their own lamps. Inks. They don't try and build their, make their own inks. And yeah. um, they stick yeah. to what they do. So you, you yeah. need different partners. And that's something I discussed for a long time is how we need to be 
more open to each other you know the, the different companies and even different you know ink companies for example they need to also work yeah, sure. together um we need to be more fluid in that way because now we're at the point where we've convinced ourselves in the industry about inkjet sure because there was uncertainty at the beginning and now we have to convince the people outside which i think needs more of a united front yeah i was sorry what i was going to say and i think it, it just backs up what you're you've been alluding to there is with most industrial inkjet projects this there's a very specific need an application and approach and it's quite difficult to find one stop shops that can do the whole thing in you know in, in in a perfect way as you said earlier holly you mentioned wide format wide format so you know it's just so different isn't it they we know what we want to do you want to print on a material you want it to work like this industrial inkjet is so different isn't it it's just it's just it, it's just so much more complex and actually what's great about the industry is that they are you are working together here's a fantastic example ralph would you agree with that definitely i mean in the end i think the reality is that that each technology whether it's curing or printheads or inks they are they are all and they basically all have their own universe and and you really need an expert to get the full potential out of each of these technologies and i mean in the end the, the beauty of inkjet is that it can be a push button technology for the end user. Uh, if you uh, printing is very complex. If, if, you, if you really explain to somebody uh, already conventional printing, uh, there, is, there is a lot of complexity to get the best quality and to get the best output. But the big advantage of inkjet is it can be a push button technology for the end yeah. user but only if all stakeholders in the industry work together and work with experts basically on sure. offering the best possible solution to the end user. Can I just ask, do you think uh, there are demonstrable cost savings from doing it this way? You mean in, in the collaboration? In the collaboration, yeah. Is it, oh, yes, know, definitely, yeah. definitely. Okay. I mean... I mean, in the end, it's. I think it's definitely there. There are cost savings in um, in the collaboration, of course, because I mean, you you share everything, you share the development, you share the application um, technology. But I think if you don't collaborate, some solutions are not even accessible uh, because you are simply missing the expert know-how yeah. in the niches, basically, where you don't really as an individual or as a, as a one-stop shop cannot look into. Yeah, I think you, your point there is exactly right. It's that sort of expertise that you have, isn't it? Each of you have expertise very specifically in that segment. So that makes, that makes complete sense. So if someone's listening and they're thinking about a project or they've identified a project or they're working with, they should come to you, but they, they would be thinking, I want my project managed how how is it going to be managed if I've got three or four different parties in there? How do you kind of pull this all together? Is there a project manager? Is there someone that kind of is the person that kind of holds it all together? Um, Ali? So, um, I mean, normally that's that's the, the work of an OEM. You know, the OEM is yeah, normally sure. the one who is, who is actually speaking to everyone yeah. Individually. So the and integrator, the integrator, or the in, developer. Integrator, the exactly. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. The developer. Uh, but the conversation of, uh, in most of the cases, in most of the projects is, okay, um, I have some, I have some issue now. Okay, I'll speak to Seiko. Seiko will yeah. reply back. Yeah. And then I'll speak to Seedware. Seedware will reply back to me. Yeah. And then I'll speak to integration technology and they'll reply back to me. Sure. And then, you know, it's, it's just bouncing of emails, you know, not, not finding the right solution. So, so that's what I'm kind of saying, business. how to avoid yeah. that bit. Yeah, how to avoid. The benefits we can see, the, the pitfalls, potentially having lots of. So that's what I was thinking in terms of having someone kind of coordinating. How, in your particular collaboration here, how have you worked it so that there is kind of one place they come to? Or is it a case of when we're talking heads, it's. Ali, or when we're talking inks, it's Ralph, or when we're talking curing, it's Tolly. How does it work between the three of you, the three parties? I mean, what we decided in this case, because we have the, um, the, the lab in our facilities. So, you know, we said, let's just 
get all the equipment and get the wisdom in. And we have an engineer who's dedicated, you know, he's working on this project. Um, so he's taking the inputs from everyone and he's trying to implement it to find the right settings. So at, at a later stage, when an integrator finally says, okay, I like this application and I want to get this out in the market, she's going to contact us and, you know, any one of us actually. And we, um, Sigo can come to the laboratory or, or Holly can bring somebody to the laboratory. It's, 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 it's open, you know, so uh, they can come, they can see the setup, they can see how the things are working. And just, just by looking at, you know, the, the application and not just, you know, making an assumption in your head, okay, if I take this print head, if I take this ink, if I take this ink um, UV system, my application is going to work. They're going to see everything working live, and that's sure. that's what sure, we sure. want to do. So, on this project again, we, we're very much focused on matte varnish, and and it's for packaging. Uh, Ralph, do you see the other applications for this? Do you see other potential possibilities for this? Yes, you definitely. Know? I mean, there there is still tremendous potential in terms of overall um, finishing uh, technologies for for inkjet. I think that's still. Um, one gap, technology gap, which is which is open to be fulfilled in inchat technology. So, give, give us an varnish. example. What are you thinking? Where, where what applications? First of all, it's it's different varnishing technologies, optic varnishes, but also haptic varnishes to make to get basically a different feel, a different touch um, on your labels or or on your packaging. Um, foiling technologies or metallic metallic effects. Um, and, and going further, maybe also a bit away uh, or, or outside of the packaging world, conductive piece. I mean, mm, of all, of these, all of these technologies, they are, um, it's, it's hot topics since a lot of years already. Um, and a lot, I think, has not been realized simply because there is an intrinsically high uh, technology barrier. So mm. there is still a lot of room for for further developments in all of these, let's say, functional uh, um, fluid applications. For yeah, no, I think what you say is, and, and there's clearly trends in that direction that are global trends that, you know, ask for things like haptics or where they're, you know, because that gives an advantage to the, you know, to, to create a, a feeling, if that makes sense. Um, Holly, I just wanted to ask you, obviously, you know, we get we hear often NDAs get in the way of collaboration. Do you sense that's a challenge? Or do, you know? Yeah, I mean, obviously that's one of the big points. That's one of the big points. You know, um, for a long time, people who were doing industrial projects, they thought they were the first, or they're doing they're the they're the you know we've got something groundbreaking here, which I can understand. People want to keep things under their belt. They want you know they they want to get it out in the market before others know about it. But yeah, it does start now to, to hinder our development, I think, you know. So I think people should really consider, do I really need, an, you know, does this really need to be under NDA or, or, you know, how wide is that NDA? Is it obviously, you know, it's there to prevent also people from, from um, copying ideas or for copying ink formulations, for example. But that's, you know, also then hinders the development in general of projects, of applications, of knowledge sharing. You know, we don't want to be caught in this circle again. We were, you know, if you go back five years ago, we were cut, we were caught in this circle where we, the ink people were waiting for the printhead people to develop something. The, the ink people were waiting for the raw material companies to develop a product, uh, a new raw material that they needed. And we were stuck in this kind of Luke. circle of of waiting for the different technologies to catch up and i can see that happening again if we're not you know more open yeah but you you mentioned it before and i think it's it's valid it's this sort of in an effort to collaborate we probably need to think differently about competition and, and working together so an nda fits within that doesn't it if you're very protective over your product then then it's difficult for you to necessarily get broad knowledge of of what the problems or the solutions are so i think your point is right really um just as we kind of come to the end of the conversation would you each like to say one thing about working together and about this project so let's start with ralph sure of course um i think as we just touched the point of of confidentiality i think 
trust is the key. Um, yeah. Not only having trust into the technical know-how of your partner, but also having personal trust um, is, I think, the, the, the best baseline for, for having a successful collaboration and then also a successful product development. Yeah, and I think on that note of trust, which I think is absolutely right, is you build that trust through being super professional in what you do and having products that people believe in, use, and then can, can recognize how good they are. And, yep. it, you know, it's, it's part of that process, isn't it? It's kind of a, it's a, it's a, it's a line that you take people along to build trust. So I think you're right in there. Uh, Ali. Um, yes. I mean, one thing I would like to add on to, to what we were discussing right now is, you know, um, when, when you have a project, I mean, when, when, when an integrator, when an OEM or when there's a final um, end user who wants to have something working, uh, yes, it's good to just go out and speak to people, get the ideas and finally see how it works. But uh, one thing is, is Inkjet is still new. And we, 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 people who have worked in Inkjet for some time, we all have got a little bit of experience under our belt. So if you open up to us, we can you know, give out our experience and our, not our knowledge out to you. And this is what we want to do. I mean, this is what we are even doing in this kind of a tech fest and in an event like this. This is, we wanna just bring out that knowledge that we have um, created in the last uh, few years by experimenting, by working on different projects, by developing our own products. So um, be open about what you wanna do. And we will try to, I mean, NDAs are there to keep you know things that are need to be secret, keep, keep them secret. So we will honor the NDAs wherever it's needed. But where it's not needed, these things are just becoming red tape and it's not yeah. helping us to go forward in the industry. So that's and, something I would like to say. Yeah, um, I think you're right. And that, that wisdom as well that you have is, is worth people recognising that, you know, you are the specialists in that segment in, in you know your stuff. And it's always worth talking to someone who knows. So, yeah, I, I agree with you. I agree with yeah. you. Uh, Holly, did you, sorry, Ali, did you want to just add one final thing? Yeah, I, ju I just wanted to just add another line. I mean, uh, this kind of uh, the collaboration, I mean, we're, we're going to show this off in the in the laboratory in two weeks time from now. So it, on the from the 19th of uh, July to the 23rd of July, we're going to have like an open week in Seiko. Excellent. So if, if you want to come and have a look at what we have achieved, uh, you know, with this collaboration, do come by and uh, have a look at that. Excellent. So just tell me that again. It's 19th to the 22nd, did you say? Third. 23rd, 23rd of July. Right. So it's, okay. it's one week. It's the it's called the Open Week, Seiko Open Week. It's from the 19th to 23rd. Um, and it's just, I mean, we're just going to uh, show different kinds of collaborations that we have done in, in the market. Um, and one of the uh, prime events or the prime things that we're going to show is the Matt Varnish yeah, the collaboration that we have here. Fantastic. Really good. And that's good. Um, and finally to Holly, just for I think words. the gentleman really, you know, analysed it and summed it up really well. I think the key point is, is to be open. You know, mm. here we're in, we're, we're open with Seagrave, we're open with Seiko. Obviously, you know, we're also um, working with other, other partners and that's the whole point. You know, we're open to the different aspects, to different projects, to different um, discussions. And I think yep. that's key. And I would say to say also to people who are considering Inkjet, you know, if you if you know it's the right application for you, because you know, you have to know it's the right thing, mm. then you need to find the right partners. You know, so find number one, consider it is actually what you need to be doing. You're not just getting on the bandwagon anyway. or thinking, oh, that sounds cool. And also then, yeah, find the right people, the, the right people to be talking to is, is really important. No, I and, think and that's don't, a, yeah. sorry. I was going to say that's a really good way of summing it up, really, Holly. Yeah. And, you know, don't be scared. We're all very friendly here. <laughs> <laughs> In the inkjet world. <laughs> yeah, no, I think I think everything you said there really sums it up. I I, I kind of think of find your A team, the, the A team, the team that you really want to work with and and then, you know, work with them work with them as, as, as Holly said and I think you know it's, it's something you talk a lot about integration technology you know yes you have a piece of technology yes you have a bit of knowledge but you know you can also tweak that to fit the exact requirements of the project and I'm, I'm sure that the same with Sigvert and the same with Seiko you know 
you have expertise, you have a product, you're also able to tweak that product to fit the specific project that you've got. So um, I think it's always worth knowing, isn't it? Thank you very much, everyone. That's really, really interesting session. And um, will, the, will, will Ralph and Holly be at the, the Seiko Open Day? Are you going to be, or the Open Week? Yes. With the, Not the full time. time. Yeah. But you're going to be there on one of the days. So, so you will be, so if anyone's interested in attending the Seiko uh, Open House Week and to see the three of you, perhaps together, in real life, in real which life. would be great, <laughs> in real life, then uh, get, in co get in contact with Ali and Ali will set that meeting up. There you go, yeah. Ali. With Thank you very much. Too. Pardon? With real Sorry. printing too. Sorry. Yeah. Yes, real printing. Exactly that. Okay. Real printing. Thank you very much, guys. It's been super. And uh, really, you know, hopefully we'll catch up again and find how this project has evolved because that's what's interesting about this. So that you're, you know, it's an evolving project. Uh, maybe we'll catch up again in the autumn. Thank you to all of you, Ali, Ralph, okay. and of course, Holly. Thank you. Thank you very much. You take care.